So um, the first operation that we're going to talk about is uh, addition. Now, we're doing, I'm dealing with one that's a little bit more difficult because once we get into more difficult operations, what's up? When we get into more difficult operations, um, these difficult functions are more difficult than the other problems. However, you are going to be doing some problems where you're going to just have like polynomials. And if you have to add, you would just add combined like terms. But in this problem, we don't really have like terms. We have x over x minus 1 um, plus g of x, which is the square root of x minus 3. So there's really not much we can do because they're not like terms, right? However, please remember from algebra 2, if we have a fraction plus uh, another fraction, we need to make sure that the denominators are the same. So what I did was, that's what we had. Add us 1. And what we'll want to do is get common denominators so we can add them. So if you look at x minus 1 and 1, what's the common denominator of x minus 1 and 1? OK, let me ask you a question. If I had a number 6, um, 6 and 3, what's the common denominator? Okay, The common denominator is the common number that divides into both of those numbers. So what is the, um, I'm sorry, sorry, least common denominator. Thinking of the common multiple, I even just now mess, 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 messed it up. What is the least common denominator means the least common multiple. What is the most common, what is the common number between these two that they both divide into? What number, do, well, what numbers does 6 divide into? 6 divides into 6, 12, 18. 3 divides into 6. So 6 is the smallest number that they both divide into, right? They have, it's what they divide into. So what does 1 divide into? 1 divides into all those numbers, right? What does x minus 1 divide into? x minus 1. That's the first number. So their common denominator, denominator is the product of these two, which is just x minus 1 times 1. But do we need to write x minus 1 times 1? No. So we're just going to use x minus 1 as their common denominator. It's the same thing like me saying, what about 6x? What's the common denominator of 6 and x? Well, those are like two different terms, right? The common denominator, or least common multiple, is 6 and x. Because does 6 divide into 6x? Yes, x times. Does x divide into 6x? Yes, 6 times. That's the same thing these. These aren't even like, like they're not even the same in this, you know, that's an algebraic expression, that's a number. So, it's, so the difference, or the common multiple, is their product of them. All right, but we don't need to write the one. Now, I multiply this through. Can you multiply an expression times a radical? Well, let's take a look. If I have the square root of 4 times 2, we know that answer is equal to 4. Agreed with me? Square root of 4 is 2, 2 times 4. So if you were to say, well, you can multiply that inside of it, Is the square root of 8 the same thing as 4? No, 2.828.4271, actually. So we can't multiply this out there. So guess what? We're just going to leave it on the outside. And that's good for you. You guys should be happy. That's less math that you have to do. Usually we like to write it in front, because sometimes I'll bring that down to show you that it's enclosed. Now, now you guys can see they have common denominators. So I have x plus x minus 1 times square root of x minus 3 all over x minus 1. Okay, So that is the addition of those two functions. That is one of the more difficult examples that you're going to have to do, but I want to show it to you. Now, the important thing, though, also is to identify the domain. So when identifying the domain, here's the biggest, best trick I can give to you guys. When you're identifying the domain, um, identify the domain of each of the functions separately. So remember, the domain of a function up here is for all values, or when you're looking at the domain of this function, it's all values except for 1, right? So that means the graph looks something like this. From negative infinity to positive infinity, except for this value 1. Can't equal that. So it goes from there all the way to there. So you can say negative infinity to 0 and 0 to infinity. It just can't equal 0. So then we connect them. So I'll write, the, I'll write the domain for that above. OK? And then this one is you can't take the square root of a negative number, right? 
So therefore, you have to set that equal to 0. I'm sorry, greater than or equal to 0, and then solve. Because everybody follows me with that. So x has to be greater than or equal to 3. That means my domain in interval notation should look like this. All right. So now I found the two domains written up there. So let's go and take a look at this here. Um, this domain says, this domain says it can't, it can be any number except for zero, right? This, is there any domain restrictions on x in the numerator? No. Is there any domain restrictions on x minus one in the numerator? No. So guess what? We don't even really care. Again, this is your answer, but as far as finding the domain, that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Does that still affect our domain? Yes, it does. We can only plug in numbers that are greater than or equal to 3, right? Is 0 greater than or equal to 3? No. So guess what? We don't even care about this domain either. So our domain is 3, 3 to infinity. That's your domain. So when I ask you to find the domain, because I am going to ask you to find the domain, 